Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Island Session. Yeah! Oh, 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 Lord! It's about that time, sit back, relax and wine now. We take in a lime, or take a wine by the time, yeah! We having some fun, in the Caribbean sun now. Jump up in a band, the soca and the steel band, yeah! Can you feel the breeze, put in your mind at ease? Just a little tease Straight from the West Indies, yeah Don't mention the food That tastes so good, yeah Liming with the boys Hanging with strictly noise, oh yeah Welcome to the Hi and welcome to another session of the Island Session. I'm DJ Strictly Noise and we are coming to you from the Grace Before Meals restaurant on Church Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. Now, on today's show, as you can see, I have the Black Stalin chilling with us on the Island Session. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about time. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> it's about, it's about time. time. It's about right. time. We're going to be talking to the Black Stalin in a few. Just stay where you are. Do not move. We'll be right back after this.
Okay, and we're back. First of all, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the island session. Mike. Yeah, I want to say it's nice to be here. <laughs> it's so nice to be here. It's uh, another yeah, legend yeah. on the island session. We welcome legends all the time. It's all the time, right? Now, let's get into some serious business. I did a little, a little <laughs> research <laughs> on the Black Stallion. Yeah, tell me. Born in San Fernando, mm -hmm. Coffee Street. Mm -hmm. How was that? You're singing good. You're singing good. How was that going? Up? You're going good. Going you're going good. You're coming in. Good? Come with it. Oh, you want more? It. He wants more. <laughs> well, he used to limbo. Right, right. <laughs> you're correct. Still, he was a limbo dancer. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was a clerk also for a little bit of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But listen, you know everything. <laughs> yeah, but, but I, I, I wanna say, you know, um. It wasn't it wasn't that rough or anything along the way, you know. It's just something that um in the business you always enjoy, uh -huh. you know. And that's moving on from stage to stage to stage, you know. In the business, right. I really enjoy it then. So even at this point, I'm still enjoying. You're still enjoying the it the all these amount of years I've been in it. Then you know. That's great. Now growing up in San Fernando and stuff, did you ever think that you would be where you at right now? I mean, you started off. I mean, as a limbo dancer. Uh, how did that transpire? Was that a, well, again, a jumping point to Calypso? Yeah. Well, again, it was always show business because you know I grew up in a house with a pan. Then, eh? you mm. know, my brother was really one of the better pan players in San Fernando, right. and um, played a lot of pan. So the pan was always home. So music was always there. Right. Um, again, I started to do a little dancing with a brother called George Jeremiah, which was one of my teachers, and um, somehow I find like um. You know, whether pan dancing or what, couldn't really bring out what I wanted to do then, you know. Right. Until I met this guy by name of Successor, which he died now a couple of years ago. And um, sort of encouraged me into the writing of the Calypso because ever since in school I've always been doing my little um, thing. You know, when it comes to right. essay and thing, they couldn't beat me. They right. couldn't beat me at all. In essays. So I just transform it into, you know, something positive. And uh, I remember going once to hear Calypso in um, a place called Empire Theatre in San Fernando. Mm -hmm. And I heard um, Pretender that night, I think, you know. And um, when I saw a Pretender just standing up there and singing and just, you know, getting that message over, I always tell myself I wanted to be something like that then, you know. Wow. And um, But I've always worked at it. I, um, since I started, I never see then I will be just one of the others. I always, you know, that's one of the things that the elders always teach you. Um, put in your hard work, do your hard right. work, and sooner right. or later. You know, I think after hard work, maybe I'm enjoying a little success in it now. You're now enjoying success? Um, well, <laughs> again, everything comes with age. Eh? Uh -huh. You know, everything comes with the age then, you know. Um, a few years ago, it was just like um, trying to put it together, hustling to put it together, um, sitting down home and making sure you get like, some amount of material to present to the people right. um, away in the tents. So then there's a must then that I sort of have my thing ready for the tents. And um, well, now I'm out of the tents, I just do some guest artists work around. Right. And um, I sort of enjoying this phase of it and all. Right. Wow, it's unbelievable. Now, you came on the scene. Uh, when, when did you start singing? Well, I started as a youth in way back 59, 60 and thing, you know. Okay. Um, you know, when the real maestros was around then, you know, I had the opportunity. Um, you know, um, knowing spoiler and, 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 and some of the big stalwarts in the business. And I mean, they all played a little part in the development of Black Stalin. And, wow. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's incredible. That's you know, incredible. Yeah, Good. You know. Now, your style of singing is really hard to describe. You know, growing up, listening to Sparrow and mm -hmm. Kitchener and mm -hmm. these other guys, the way how they sang, your style was different you uh, to me that's my personal yeah yeah view yeah, that yeah you yeah. took calypso to a different level as so david rudder mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm, two yeah. different i mean the yeah, styles yeah, were yeah. nowhere similar to the, the other guys yeah. who were doing it now how did you come up with that style um one of the things that i realized early in kai so then eh, that um although it's a music we're dealing with then but still in the music you have individuals right and what make the individual in the music is your language and your syncopation mm -hmm. you know and i think everyone that sings calypso and composes calypso have a different syncopation right. and a different language um i'll show you if i ask shadow 
David Rudder and Chuck Dust to write a kaizo for me on the car outside there. Um, from Chuck Dust, I'm going to get the data about the car. I'm going to know when the car born, who was right. the mother, which part it right. born. Um, from David Rudder, I'm going to get the philosophy of the car. Right. And then from Shadow, I'm going to hear how the, the donkey cat wasn't working good and the man decided <laughs> he had to get something to go faster. And also between those three guys, they're going to get three different syncopations. Right. Because from Chuckles, they're going to get a nice slow shoe, by the way. Right. And from Shadow, they're going to get that haunting bass line. Mm -hmm. and, right. and from David Rudder, they're going to get some nice shango rhythms and wow. things. And it's going to be three beautiful songs. What will we get from you? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I think somebody else does have to say it for me. I am okay. I, 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 um, I on the inside. Right. You know, right, right, and right. um. Sometimes, um, you know, sometimes I don't even know how good I, uh, how I look or on a show then, you know, somebody in the audience have to tell me that. So I have people out there will tell black man, you know, I still will when I write a song, we discuss it with a couple brothers, right. how they feel about it and these things, you know. Now, <clears throat> the first song you made, what was this first song you made that impression on, on everybody when you came out on the scene? I think it really started, um... Of course, I was around all in the early 60s and thing, but I think not until 1967 when I made my first final singing um, a song named Beat My Tune and Call Tear First. I think that was the first big impression that I made. Also, it was my first recording too. And, um, you know, from then on, it was no looking back, uh, you know, from 67. Then I was back in the Savannah again in 69 coming around first run up to Duke um, I was back there again in 72 and then let's like say the rest of the 70s um, I've been in the final something like about 24 times in Trinidad and Tobago I won the I won the yeah I won the contest on five occasions and I was first run up in something like three occasions uh -huh. you know it is it, it, yeah. it, it's a big one out there so the first time you won that song was is it let me uh, is it Caribbean man? Caribbean man, 79, ah, 79. Research by research. <laughs> <laughs> you have, you have your take down? Right? Mm. This is who you won against. Explainer. Yeah. Them Madrid. Yeah, Madrid. Yeah, huge yeah. Huge song. Huge song, big one. Now, let me ask you this. Did you, did you think you would have beat Explainer? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you see, um, listen that that group in that i was in in 1979 um explainer mary debo under me you know oh, yeah? i selected explainer wow. for the calypso tent you know when uh -huh. explainer first started to sing it started in the review 1970 and i was the mc and the right, total the organizer MC, right. of the tent only felt like my um, mudada and relator and um them they made a debut under me um crazy and these guys and them um you know, when we later came in, I was the, we was the last person I and Kitchen uh, Brigo and then went and spoke to him about coming into the tent. Mm -hmm. And um, I knew I had two nice songs, you know, because I think the Savannah always is two rounds. Right. And um, that year, with Caribbean Man and how it was happening, and then I had um, Play One, which was unique because I think, you know, people have been making a lot of pan songs, but I think Play One was the first time that they really see a duet then between a pan and the singer then mm. because this is what play one was about right. you know where you start the song saying come a little closer with your pan let me have a nice conversation right you know so i think that that duet and seeing that duet in the savannah i know it was hard to beat because it was the mix of all the cultures you know at that at that, that time wow wow the black stalin <laughs> right here on the island session you know, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to have more questions soon. Stay tuned.
Okay, welcome back to the Island Session. Once again, we are in Brooklyn, chilling at the Grace Before Wheels restaurant. We are going to be shooting here regular, all right, on Wednesdays. I have a legend in the house on the Island Session, the Black Stallion, chilling with us. Right? Grace Before Meals. Grace, Grace Before, before meals. meals. Grace restaurant. Before Meals. That's right. Now, let's go back to where we were. The way you, you, you come up with these songs. Now, your songs are very much positive positive vibes yeah 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 all your songs caribbean man uh-huh uh-huh my yeah. favorite song uh -huh. bond them <laughs> every time i hear that song yeah, i go crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now what make you take that road you know singing these positive songs well i i, I tell you something you know i had always seen the kaisonian as maybe the old african storyteller you know that fella that keep going from village to village and keeping the, 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 the name of the heroes alive and the good works then teaching the youths you know to remember the heroes and I always um, you know and especially when I started to sing I so then the beauty of it all for me was when um, you know when the old lady would meet me and tell me um, you know two days now you see I ain't getting no water you know I hope you sing about that <laughs> you, you know or somebody uh -huh. would say a week now, I ain't got my pension, right, you know. Right, I hope right, you right. sing about that. Mm. And I used to feel, you know, you know, so honored to know that um, poor people, you know, um, you know, could in my hands, you know, put their whole right. their welfare. Then that choose I as the person to carry that message to who in authority for them. And I've always seen it as maybe more service than entertainment. Uh -huh. You know. Um, even when I come out here to do shows, or I go to any other countries to do a show, whether in Europe or where, I always see it that like I more come to service the community than to do a job. Right. You know, because um, when Black Stalin in town, that whole night, the whole session of the night is about uh, just about a love then. You know, people sometimes come to my show and they don't even hear me when I sing in them because a friend meet a friend. And, right. and, and, and they end up, that is the night then. And both of them is my friend, but six months they didn't see one another. And that whole aura of right, the night right. then, you know, you know, have sometimes have nothing to do with even Stalin singing, but while Stalin saying, I'm going to meet a friend who I didn't meet. And that kind of love flow. So I always see myself like at maybe servicing it, you know, you come in winter, it's a little sunshine I bring in, man. So, you know, we can spend a little five, six hours right. in a dance hall and we go run a little love and leave warm and thing and carry a message with you then. So I've always seen it more as carrying a message and going to deliver something more than actually entertainment, you know. And I think this is the success of Black Stalin. Because, um, as they say, I always try to keep my ears as close as possible to the ground. Right. You, you know? Yeah. So I think that can... Um, this is what, you know, somebody may say, well, Black Stalin does it different or what then, but as I say, you know, ground level. Wow, you know. that's interesting. Now, listen to this. <laughs> listen to this. Tell me, I'm listening to you. Now, you sang about Sundar. Yes, yeah, Sundar, Sundar. All right. Mm -hmm. It was a tribute to him, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, Trinidad and Tobago, we have East Indians and we also have um, the Blacks. Yeah, right? it's a mix, it's a mix, and a beautiful mix. Is there, is, it's a little racial tension, which is really foolish to me. Because I grew up with Indians, you know, and I love mm -hmm. everybody. You understand? Mm -hmm. We're all Trinidadians, I love children, you know. But was there any opposition when, you know, on, on our race, we are saying, well, why are you singing about, you know? No, 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 no. I think, it, I think a lot of people um, get up with this tense, the race tension in Trinidad, you know. I think that's a political thing, you know. Yeah. I don't think it has no race tension when, you know, when a man go in the market to buy food. Right. You know what I mean? When you go in the market to buy food, you go to buy food to eat. Right, and yeah, it yeah, don't matter right. who you buy it from. Well, don't buy it now. If it's only Indian <laughs> selling, don't buy it and dead. <laughs> you, 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 know, you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you know, you know. 
and that whole race thing i think is a political thing to look for vote but when you go to the to the to the ladder when you go to a dance or carnival or you go in a mass band yeah. when you look at poison or yeah. you look at wayne barkley or you look at all the other bands and you see the mix of people enjoying themselves True. you have to ask yourself well, where the race you know where's the tension and this race thing that going on so i think like um you know um people was so happy to hear a song like Sundar then. Yeah. So as to bring in the races together and just showing somebody out there that we don't have nothing like that existing. And I'm Sundar from really the same area. Right. Um, he from Philippine, I from right down the hill. And um, we known one another for a lot of years. And um, I still had that kind of respect for him because he did his work and I did mine. Right. And it was so happy that both of us could have reached a point where we could have put it together and share and um and you know what was strange about it this was 1995 and i think you know like um six months after or eight months after we had an election in trinidad where the government was formed by basdev pandey and enr robinson uh -huh. you, you know you know yeah. and, 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 and so so i don't think um the unity the, the this um racial tension you know, it's yeah, that's a political ploy. I hear that. I hear that. Now you have in stores, uh, city. Talk about that city. About you, you have a city in stores right now. Oh yeah, yeah, right yeah, 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 and yeah. Anybody yeah. need to get that city. That's yeah, is, yeah. You in concert is the best. Well, it's it's, it's, it's a concert I did a few years ago, and on it I had the opportunity. What we did something like seventeen songs for the night. And among them is um, somewhat I will call the classics then, whether it be Dorothy Bond, then we could make it if we try, Black Man Don't Get Nothing Easy, Black Man Fill in the Party, Come With wow. It, More Come. And um, we had it out here, well, it released a couple of days right. here in New York, and we released it in the Caribbean already, and it's doing real nice. I can it, it's doing, doing real nice. Um, I think it's one of the CDs that people have been looking out for for a long time. To get something like 17 songs of Black Stalin, right. but it's happening, and then you know it's looking good out there. Legend, yeah. right? <laughs> 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 the Black Stalin man. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Howard McCloud did a show. He does. A, he does a show every year. Uh -huh. you, you were in the show. It's not the Mother's Day show. It's the show before the Mother's Day. The show. Mother's Day. Uh -huh, the uh -huh. one before that. Yeah. And I was chilling out, and you know the. So artists, no, no, sorry, the, Cal the Calypsonians won. I don't yeah, want to mention yeah, it. Yes. And people were sitting down and joining vibes, you know, they were enjoying. The show was really good. <laughs> Big up to Howard McClough. Yeah, 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 and yeah. You came on. <laughs> no, seriously. I saw you in the back, you know, we, we talking yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. And you came on and everybody just got up off their chairs. As soon as you, I think you, you started with, is it the Caribbean man you started with? Caribbean man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. just got up off their chairs yeah, and yeah. started dancing. <laughs> I was amazed, seriously. Yeah, well, I think people out there, I think it's part of the trademark of Black Stalin yeah. now then, you know, that um, people just love to sing. One of the things I tell you, you know, in Calypso, I always see myself as a Chantwell. And, um, that was the guy who used to sing for the group. That was the guy who used to chant when you're working in the morning to make you put another another pong in pulling the, the iron. Right. And I always like to see myself as writing a kaiso, a piece for me and a piece for the audience. You know, because what I'm singing about is not about black style. And when I say me or I, I really talking about everybody in the audience. And I think through my writing, people recognize that then. So when Black Stalin is there, it's not really Black Stalin coming to do something for them, but it's their song then. Right. You know, and this is why sometimes I do Black Man Fill in the Party and don't sing a line. You know, I will yeah, just stand up. And, and, uh, that is what you did. Yeah. You just stand up, everybody just singing the song. That was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Man. yeah. Well, it's their song. It's their song, you know, right. and I, um, you know, I present it to them then in that way then, you know. You know? Wow, wow. Well, you know what? We so short on time. This was going so good, man. I'm, I want to really thank you for coming through, taking time out of your busy schedule and coming down to the island session. Yeah. Well, I want to say again, nice to have you, mate, to all your listeners outside there. You know, I mean, um, 
you got a beautiful show. I mean, um, all through the Caribbean, uh, as I was saying, I heard it, uh, saw it a few in Grenada. in Grenada a few days ago, and I think it's a fantastic work that you're doing. Um, you know, um, to keep the music alive, because we we talking about a music that been happening since what 1929 and all kind of thing. Yeah. Calypsonians was here already, and to know that after so much years that you could 50 and more years you could still be doing something for Calypso. I want to say thanks again and it's real beautiful talking to you. And listen man, anytime the black man in town and you, you need to chat, you have to, you hail have me to out. Just through, hail me out and I go be here. <laughs> All right. All right? Love man. I want to thank everybody for tuning into the Island Session. Once again, we are here each and every week. I want to thank Guy LTV for having me on the Island Session. I also want to thank Marla for having me here at the, the Grace Before Me's restaurant. Good night everybody and we will see you right back here same time. Good night.